Hi, my name is Orla and it's Blitz. So how are you today? I hope you're doing fantastic. If you're new here, hi, my name is Orla. I'm a big fan of fan culture, pop culture, and today we're gonna to be talking about my comfort shows. I have a much deeper emotional attachment to my comfort shows than my comfort movies, which I talked about recently. Please feel free to comment down below what your comfort shows are. I just love hearing these things. I absolutely adore it. And if you like fan culture, pop culture, and all the other fun stuff, you might as well give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the little bell notification. It's just a fun time on this channel. I never know if I'm speaking clearly or not. Anyway, my comfort shows. I dearly, 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 dearly adore my comfort shows. They just, they mean so much to me. I, mm. I feel like in general, you have less comfort shows than you have comfort films. Cause you know, comfort films, you just watch them more often. Than, but comfort shows, like I have to binge watch it. Like I can never just like casually watch my comfort shows. I do need to binge watch them. So I'll just start by, t by telling you what they are and then I'm just gonna talk about them. I'm not gonna do it like the last video. I'm just gonna say them now and then talk. So I have two main comfort shows and then one that's kind of like an honorary mention. So the first one is Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Then it's Julie and the Phantoms. And then the honorary mention is American Horror Story. Mainly that's an honorary mention because it's not all the seasons. It's just some of them. Generally with my comfort shows, even if there's parts of the plot that I kind of dislike, I love the whole thing overall. Like, yeah, I'm going to point out flaws in The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and Julie and the Phantoms and American Horror Story. But overall, the whole story, I love. I love, I love, I love. Now, my main problem with The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina was like the last episode, which is kind of disappointing. It's like, I can so, 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 so tell that they were not expecting it to end and it ended abruptly. And so they had to come up with an end that would just kind of go like, and have everything just like done all at once. And it was so devastating. I'm absolutely devastated, devastated. Like I'd love to know, I'd love for the writers of Sabrina to tell us what their plan was. Cause I know that was not the ending that they were planning for. It just, it felt very obvious. You know, there was a very big build up in that season and then it just kind of goes up. So yeah, like I just, uh, I'd love to have a sit down and be like, what were you actually planning for the next season or two? Cause realistically it would have gone on for about maybe like six seasons. I would say it's six is like a good number, six, seven. I don't know. I would have kept on watching forever, but you know. Luckily there's not too many like, I don't have a single problem with Julie and the Phantoms, do I? No, the one thing, Carrie. I need some justice for my girl Carrie because she's not like the mean character that I feel like she has been set up to be. And I feel like you're already seeing that she's not that mean character, but I do need justice for my girl Carrie. I'm very invested into all the plots. I can binge watch these shows numerous times and just never, 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 never get bored. And that doesn't happen with me. Like, especially like I can rewatch films, but for some reason rewatching TV shows never really works out for me. I just get bored and spacey. But I can binge watch these over and over and over and over again. I will say for Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, it took me like two times watching the show for me to be like, this is something that I actually need in my life for good. Like I just need it. Uh, fun fact, I almost got struck by lightning watching The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Bit of an exaggeration, but not really. I was binge watching Chilling Adventures of Sabrina when I was in Italy. No, not like the whole time. Like any time that I had downtime, I was watching it because I forgot to bring a book. I'm like, oh my God. So like if I was by the lake, I would be watching Chilling Adventures. Anytime that I wasn't like out sightseeing and doing stuff, I was watching Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. However, I was staying up in a kind of like wood, tree covered area, the woods not really the woods, but like a tree covered area where the reception was shocking. So I had to download these episodes using data. And it was stormy one day and it was lashing rain. I went down to the lake to download a few episodes then go back to where I was staying to watch them in the comfort of a home. When I was walking back, lightning struck very close. I'd say, two, three feet away from me. It seemed very dramatic in my head. Maybe that was God. 
getting mad at me for being obsessed with a show that Satan's daughter. <laughs> Third, okay, most importantly, with all these comfort shows, most importantly is that I love all the characters. And like, that doesn't usually happen for me. When I'm watching shows, there's usually a character or two that I hate. I, I just, I don't like them. There's always characters, not that I need, not even that I hate, just that like, I just don't care about. It always happens that I'm watching a show and there's a character and I'm, I'm like, I'm sure they're lovely. I just don't care about them. But I love all the characters in all of these shows so much. And I'm not sure if my brain can actually comprehend that they are not real people. Hi, editing me coming in to say, I said that because I read somewhere or I heard somewhere, maybe I saw a TikTok about this, that basically your brain can't, your brain doesn't understand fiction or something like that. So when you read a book, your brain can't like actually understand that it's fiction. And like, if you have a dream, sometimes your brain can't actually decipher that it's not real. So you physically, like you consciously know not real, but your brain is like, real like look at julie and the phantoms it's kind of like a small ish cast there's not like a whole 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 bunch of characters that you have to remember now you'd they can introduce like a few more characters and it still wouldn't be all too many like sometimes that happens with shows there's just too many characters and you don't like you can't like all these characters but like you love everybody in julie and the phantoms and also it's got a killer, killer, killer soundtrack, so what's not to love? Same with Chilling Adventure Sabrina. I adore all of those characters. Now, there's more characters than that, but I adore them all. They're very well fleshed out characters, and I just think that they're played so well. I miss Ambrose Spellman so much. I miss Nick Scratch. I miss... Bless you. I miss Aunt Zelda and I miss Aunt Hilda. I miss Sabrina. I miss the weird sisters. I miss Harvey, I miss Jazz, I miss Theo. I miss Melvin. Mainly as well. These are just like very like feel safe, feel good shows for me. I know it's gonna be different for everybody. Somebody else could watch this and be like, I don't know what you're seeing, but these are very good for me. It feels like a whole other uniform. U un universe. <laughs> it feels like a whole other universe. It feels like a universe that I'm just like checking in on. It's the same story every single time, but it still feels like a universe that I'm just checking in on, having a good time. Now, American Horror Story. You see, I don't have that like feeling with all of the seasons because they're obviously all like different stories. So obviously, like, season one, two, three. Ble You see, I don't actually watch these shows as often as I like, mainly because I get so invested that I have to spend all my time watching. And then I also like, I watch the shows and then I watch the interviews and then I just look at fan stuff and then it's all consuming. But like Julian the Phantoms, A, Kenny Ortega, whatever he does, it's always amazing. Uh, the soundtrack to Julian the Phantoms is just like, it's amazing. Like, it doesn't sound like the soundtrack of like, a technically speaking, a kid's show. It's technically speaking a kid's show. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like the soundtrack for a kid's show. It sounds amazing. A lot of the songs don't even sound like they're meant to be like movie songs or like TV show songs. They just sound like great songs. Julian the Phantoms as well. I watched it for the first time because I saw everybody on TikTok talking about it and I was like, I'm kind of confused because I don't know what's going on here. And because I sent so many TikToks to my best friend about Julian the Phantoms, even though she's never watched the show before, and they come up on her for your page as well. And I feel like that's the reason why a lot of people watch Julian the Phantoms was because they saw it on TikTok and they were like, hmm, what is this thing? And then just get like, Phew. my friend was like, I feel like I know the story because I've seen so many TikToks on it. And so I explained the story to her and she was like, no, I never would have gotten that in a million years. Yeah, it was the second time that I actually watched Julie and the Phantoms that I was like, oh, this show I absolutely adore and I kind of need it in my life because the first time I watched it, I was watching it because I saw so many people on TikTok talking about it and I was like, I need to know what this is. I need to be up to date. <laughs> I need to be up to date 
I'm so interested in this show that everybody seems obsessed with. And Julie and the Phantoms, why is it so addictive? Why? Why? How is it so addictive? I don't know how this happened. My hair looks like a baseball cap. Also, I love a show where I can come up with loads of different like little theories and I do that all the time with Julian the Phantoms. Like every time I watch it, I'm like microanalyzing every single frame and I'm like, hmm, hmm. Probably looking way too far into things. Chilling adventures as well. They had some good songs in there. Like they were a musical cast. I feel like I've seen videos of behind the scenes of that cast and they were a very like musical cast, like musically inclined cast, just like chilling around, making some songs together kind of cast. Maybe that's what makes a great show. Is the cast, I know it's like, I know it's obviously the cast, but like if the cast really get along together and like really like connect over other things other than just the show, like music. Why is my hair going into a side part? Oh, they did total eclipse of the heart into the Avengers Reina and One Direction also signed that only four of the X Factor, which I thought was like a <laughs> I honestly didn't know why I clicked like why I started filming this video. All I want to tell you is that if you haven't seen Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, go watch it. Um, last episode, I just I just pretend that the last episode doesn't actually exist. I still adore the show. Like it's a great show. It's just unfortunate that they had to end it or else that wouldn't have been the last episode. That last episode wouldn't have happened. And I feel like that is forgivable. I feel like it can still be my comfort show, even though last episode, I'm like, mm. I feel like a lot of shows have a bad last episode though. Like, how can you have something that's so like, mm, mm, I love it so much and then just be like, okay, with how it ends. Have I ever seen a show with a good ending? Everybody needs a comfort show. And I would recommend that you check out these ones because they, Julian Phantoms, oh my God. I feel like most people who I've seen watching Julian the Phantoms get sucked into it. It's not like, I don't feel like many people like just casually like Julian the Phantoms. I feel like everybody gets sucked into it and like it's a personality trait at this stage. Like it's my personality trait at this stage. I like K-pop and I like Julian the Phantoms and I like Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and I'm waiting for One Direction to come back. And if you only hold me tight. Tell me what your comfort shows are. I, I, this was a very unnecessary video. I just really felt like making this video. Anyway, <laughs> if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it and post notifications. Remember, you say genius, I think Minion Geek. All my socials will be linked down below. And I will see you when I see you. Okay, bye.